So if you're filming any kind of action scene, you're gonna need some smoke puffs, muzzle flashes, and other kinds of stock footage, but you don't have the money for action essentials, the will to buy action VFX, and you've never heard of this website that's too cheap to buy the better domain name. Instead, what we can do is simulate our own smoke puffs using this whole program called Wonder, and in a future tutorial, we'll also make some procedural muzzle flash. Oh, hey, I didn't see there. Before I show you how to make some smoke puffs, I just wanna let you know I have a second channel called Default Cube where I post longer to- So with Wonder open, disband to Default Cube. <laughs> Incoming! Replace it with a small circle which we'll use as our emitter and position it horizontally. Now in the particles tab, create a new particle system which will give us this result, but instead we want this to look more like a burst of energy. And to do this, we can have it only emit for one frame with a much lower lifetime and in the velocity setting set this to a higher speed with some randomization. This way our initial depressing particles start to look more like this. Now to turn this into a smoke simulation, just run the quick smoke command which gives us our domain and resize it to fit our simulation. Finally, when we play this, we're gonna get our final smoke puff with all the nice physics baked right in. And there you go, another soul cleansing beginner friendly tutorial. I've been CG Matter, you've been you, bye bye so what we need to do next is select our emitter, go to the physics tab, and set the flow source to our particle system. This way the smoke is now being emitted from our particles, and we can fix this fast rising smoke by enabling initial velocity. And now to make our simulation not look like garbage, just select the smoke domain, and we're going to be playing around with these settings. First of all, resolution divisions controls the voxel size of your simulation, and you can just think of this as setting the amount of detail, and I like to keep this at around 120. The next setting to look at is the time scale, and this will affect the speed of our simulation, and since smoke puffs move quickly, I'm going to change this to the maximum value. Next for the behavior options, we have density, which determines if our smoke is more or less dense than error, in other words, whether it floats or sinks. In my case, I want the smoke to rise slowly, so I'll use a density value of 0.2, but the losers who want sinking smoke can use a negative value. Moving on to the temperature difference, this will affect our simulation in a similar way, so we can skip over this and move on to vorticity, which determines how much swirling we get in our smoke, and I'm just going to use the maximum value. If you want even more detail, you can enable high resolution, which adds a bit of wavelet turbulence to our smoke, and for even more detail in our simulation, just add in a turbulence force field where the strength controls how much extra noise we get in our environment. Now finally, make sure to enable dissolve with a larger time, which controls the dissipation of our smoke, enable adaptive domain to reduce the file size of our simulation, and after naming your simulation cache, we can bake in all the physics if you're happy with your simulation. Now for the shading, we can just select our smoke domain, which already has this material, and all that's left to do is add in a volume info node, connect the density to the density socket, and to get more visible smoke, we can add in a math node and multiply this by some larger number. Once you're happy with your final result, it's obviously time to render this out, and that can either be done by punishing your computer, or you can use the sponsor for this video, Concierge Render. And Concierge Render is a GPU render farm compatible with your Blender 2.79, 2.8, and 2.81 project. They have over 40,000 GPUs that will run you as low as 35 cents per GPU per hour, and you can find out more about this in the pricing page, and I recently used Concierge Render to render out my short invisible dominoes. It's an extremely fast render farm with very low prices, and they can actually handle simulations, which is going to be good for us. And to use Concierge Render, all we have to do is choose whatever export settings we want, go to File External Data and set this to automatically pack our blend file, and make sure to set all the paths to relative. Now we're going to take our blend file and the simulation cache and pack these together into a zip file, log into your Concierge Render account, and head over to the File Manager, and upload our pack zip file. And when that's done uploading, we're just going to set this to launch our render with whatever settings you want for your project, and we can check up on this in the job manager, which will eventually tell us the details for the render and let us download the final files. And with Concierge Render, we actually have an even more convenient option that lets us use Dropbox Sync services. This will let us upload our files without visiting the website, and there's no extra charge for using this option. And to set this up, just go to your account page where you can link your Dropbox account, and then all we need to do is put our blend file in the simulation cache in a single folder, use your Dropbox directory to find the uploads folder, which is where we'll drop our project, and after this is done uploading through Dropbox, you're going to find that this is automatically loaded into Concierge render. And the best part is that after we launch this render, Dropbox will also automatically download the finished output files. So this is another great option you can use, which again doesn't cost you anything extra. And there you go, you now know how to make smoke puffs and we'll tackle procedural muzzle flashes in the next tutorial, but other than that, add in CG Matter, you've been you, Bye bye